Hello and welcome to part two in the how to create a simulator game on Roblox series. Now, in the last part, uh, we learned how to uh, create a weight, which when you lifted it, uh, gave you strength. And in this video, we're going to be creating the rebirth system. So when you hit a certain amount of strength, you'll be able to rebirth, uh, give it up, go back to zero, uh, and then you'll gain one rebirth point. Uh, and then over time, uh, the more rebirths that you get, the higher uh, the uh, well, the more strength you get, and uh, the higher the boundary it is to rebirth again. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have been very nice. I have created a rebirth GUI. Uh, it looks like this, uh, and it has a rebirth button, and it also shows how much strength you need to rebirth. I've put this in the description for you. Go ahead and take the model, add it to your inventory, then go to home toolbox go to my models and uh, drag it in uh, to the starter GUI. What we're going to do is we're going to have the main frame set to visible uh, and I've also given you the local script uh, but I've only defined the variables. If you want to take the entire code uh, then you can become a channel member. But we're going to be scripting this rebirth system. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, let's get into it. So first thing that we're going to want to do uh, is we're going to want to script the rebirth button. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the local script here in our weight sorry not in our weight in the GUI uh, and then I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to firstly set the text okay so I want to set this text to say how much strength I need to rebirth all right because let's say that the player just joined and their data was saved we're gonna do data saving soon but it's not gonna be 5,000 if they've already rebirthed so uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to say strength to rebirth which is our um, our text label inside of the mainframe in the rebirth menu. There is a text label called strength to rebirth and it basically says how much strength you need. So we're going to go and say strength to rebirth dot text equals and then in speech marks we're going to say you need at least and then space dot dot and then we're going to say math dot floor which rounds a number and then inside of here, we're going to do, uh, inside these brackets, we're going to do another pair of brackets and say start a rebirth amount, which is the amount of rebirths, uh, well, which is the amount of strength you need to rebirth for the first time. I've set this to 5,000 at the top of the script. So we're going to take this number and we're going to add to it the number of rebirths that we have. So rebirths dot um, value because I've defined rebirths here to just get their leader stats and get the rebirth stat. So we're getting that value and we're timesing it uh, by uh, math.squareRoot. Um, I don't know, we can just put a random number in here, okay? So it's going to times that number by the square root um, of uh, 50 million, okay? Um, you don't have to do math or square root. Uh, I guess you could just actually write in the square root of 5 million. Um, it's up to you. You can write um, it however way you want. Completely up to you. But then what we're going to do is we're going to just close off this bracket for the uh, math.floor. That's going to round it to the nearest whole number. Uh, and then we're going to do another uh, dot dot to, con to concatenate it back together. And we can say strength. Uh, to rebirth just like that so it's going to say you need at least and it's going to put the number in and then it, will, then it will say strength to rebirth the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to code the uh, the button uh, the menu button which you see over here so that it toggles the GUI on and off so we can go back into the local script uh, and we can drop a line and I'm going to get the main button which is the variable that I uh, declared at the start main button dot mouse button one click colon connect and then we can say in bracket in, in bracket function with another pair of brackets uh, and then close that off with an end and a closing bracket so this is this is an event it will listen out uh, for when the the main button has been clicked and when it has we're just going to set the mainframe's visibility to the opposite of what, whatever it is now so we can say mainframe dot visible equals not mainframe dot visible just like this okay 
Uh, and then outside of here, we don't need to do anything else because um, that is that is uh, managing all of uh, the, the button now. It will open up the GUI uh, when it's closed and um, obviously close it when it is open. So what we want to do, we want to do another one of these events for the rebirth button. So we can say rebirth uh, button uh, dot mouse button one click colon connect and then function again. But inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to in we're going to create a remote function and we're going to invoke that remote function. And that remote function is going to, well, on the server, it's going to check whether a player has enough strength so that they can rebirth. Now, as I said in part one, we use remote functions and remote events so that uh, the player can't exploit, so that they can't give themselves infinite strength. Um, so that they can rebirth immediately. We do the checks on the server so that we can um, verify that a player is allowed to do something. So we're going to create the remote event here. So I'm going to say in the remotes folder, we're going to add in a, well, I've already added it in, uh, but you'll need to add it in yourself. It's a remote function called rebirth. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to then just do a variable over here, and this is going to store the result which the server returns back to us. So we can say local result equals replicated storage, and then we can say dot remotes because it's in that remotes folder, dot rebirth colon invoke server, and that's going to store the result. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the server and we need to um, script this. Okay, so we're going to go into the remote script and uh, and begin coding this on the server. So here we are in the server script, and what we're going to do is we're going to just create a uh, another. Well, not it's not an on server event; it's an on server invoke, and it's a callback function. So we have to uh, link up to to a function. And you'll see what the difference is here. So we'll say um, replicated storage dot remote dot uh, rebirth, and we can say dot on server. Sorry, on uh, yeah, on server invoke, and then we say equals function, okay, and then we can just drop a line and add in an end like this. You don't need a closing bracket on the end, okay. So inside of here, what we need to do, we need to do the same thing as we did in lift, and we need to copy this line, which checks whether they have a remote data folder, okay? Uh, and we're also going to pass through the argument of the player. So we are going to say player over here, so we know who called it. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to store their amount of rebirths as a variable. So local rebirths equals player dot leader stats dot rebirths and that will just be the number of rebirths that they've got so what we want to do now is we want to check to see if they have uh, enough strength for that required rebirth so we can say um, if player dot leader stats dot strength dot value is greater than or equal to and then in brackets we're going to do the same thing as we did in the local script which is the criteria to be able to rebirth so we're just going to copy this okay and so we're going to do the math.floor, copy that. And we're going to go back to the remote script and just paste it in there. OK. Uh, and then we're going to just say then drop a line. And so uh, what we need to do here is we need to define our starter rebirth amount again. So at the top, um, what, we, what we could actually do is we could um, send the starter rebirth amount, but then it can easily be exploited. So we're just going to say local starter rebirth amount equals 5000 uh, the same as we put it in the local script okay so back in the remotes uh, script what we need to do now is we just need to well obviously if they do have enough strength then we can say rebirths dot value equals rebirths dot value plus one so we can add a rebirth we then want to put their strength back at zero so player dot leader stats dot strength dot value equals zero and then we can respawn them by saying player cut on load character just like this okay and then we're going to return back to the local script true to let them know to what to let the script know that they rebirthed successfully and we can display like a success message on their screen but if they don't have enough strength to rebirth we can just say else uh, else return uh, not enough strength okay 
So that's all we need to do on the server to check to see if they're eligible to rebirth. What we can now do is go back to the local script and we can pick up the result which we just returned, uh, which we are storing in this result variable, uh, and then we'll be able to check it and uh, say whether it was a, a success or not. So what we can do is we can say if result equals equals true, so if it is true, then we can say rebirth button dot text equals um, successfully rebirthed, okay? And then we can do wait one, so wait one second, and then we can set the text again back to what it originally was, and that is click here to rebirth, okay? But else if result equals false, sorry, not false, not enough strength, because that's what we returned in the server script, then we're just going to set the rebirth button's text uh, to, whoops, we set the back button, rebirth button, Actually, we, I'm just going to interrupt here. You don't need um, the back button here because I actually added it in by mistake because um, I was trying to add something else to the GUI. But we don't need it at this part in the tutorial. So I'm just going to delete that from the uh, from the variables here. So if you don't have it, don't panic. Uh, you can delete it if you have added it in yourself. Uh, rebirth button dot text equals not strong enough or your own custom message if you want to. Uh, change that and once again we can wait one second and say rebirth button dot text equals click here to rebirth so what we've done is we've just uh, made it so when they click the button we will make them rebirth uh, and if that is a success then we can display it on the GUI that it was uh, else we can say that they don't have enough strength and the last thing that we need to do is we need to have an event which checks to see if their rebirth value changes. And if it does, we're going to update this strength to rebirth text because this is only updating when they first join the game. What if they rebirth during their stay in our game? So we can say player. In fact, we don't need to see that. We can just say rebirths. We'll say rebirths colon get property changed signal. And then inside of these brackets, the property that we're listening listening for to be changed uh, is going to be the value. So when that is changed, we can connect up to this function. And inside of here, we can just uh, copy this code from line 13 and paste it in. And that's going to uh, update the strength to rebirth text. Uh, and we don't need to do anything more with that. So that should be our rebirth system fully integrated now. Let's go ahead and uh, test it out. So I'm going to close down the mainframe and see if the button works first. I'm going to keep the output open in case we have any errors, uh, but the, the, the menu is opening perfectly. If I click on click to rebirth, it says not strong enough. So let's go ahead and start lifting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the server and give myself um, 4,999 strength. And that should say not strong enough. There we go. Uh, my camera seems to have glitched out a little bit. Uh, oh, that is because I'm I'm really big and I've gone into the base plate, so don't worry. Uh, but I'm going to then go ahead and lift to put me over 5,000 strength. I'm going to click here to rebirth. And there we go. Uh, the strength has been reset to zero and I gained a rebirth. And if we try it again, you can see I now need even more strength to rebirth and I'm not strong enough. I need to uh, start rebirthing again. But this time, I'm gaining 50 strength per time, per click. So there we go, guys. We've just added a rebirth system to our simulator. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, turn on the notification bell. And if you'd like to take the code uh, from this series um, so that you don't have to put in the work or... Uh, if you just want to, you know, take it to use for yourself, uh, then you can become a channel member by clicking the join button uh, next to the subscribe button, uh, and then you'll be able to take the code. All right, guys, I will see you in part three.